This is Damon L. Jacobs. I'm here in We Love Soap Studio in New York City with the beautiful, talented, gorgeous Jacqueline Zeman. How are you? I'm happy to be here sitting next to you on the sofa, Damon. <laughs> I'm happy to be back on the couch with a shrink. Um, and you must oh, be glad. Oh, let me tell you my life story. <laughs> oh, no, wait. <laughs> Good, we'll get to that. Um, oh, yeah. But this is kind of a homecoming for you. You're back in Manhattan. This is where your career started. It did? Yeah. What's that like to be um, home? It's, oh, well, first of all, the energy, the people. You're in the city. You know, we've been up and down the street and all around. It's, it's fabulous. Yeah. It's absolutely fabulous. There's nothing like this city in the whole world. Don't you miss Manhattan? Did you? Um, you know, well, I get my, my dose of Manhattan just because over the years, my family's in New Jersey, and my, I have a lot of my friends' friends that are my forever friends, a lot of them are still here. So it's not like I feel this huge separation, but every time I come back, I still get very excited, always, to be here. Me too, me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what brings you to Manhattan for now, for this October? What are, why are you here? Well, my whole life has been <laughs> like a whirlwind the last few months. But I'm, I'm excited. I'm the national spokesperson for Zestra. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And what is Zestra? About that. Um, Zestra arousal oils. It, they're, it's, it's amazing. For, yeah, for the women who don't know what it is, um, it's topically applied. Um, it increases desire, arousal, and satisfaction in 70% of women in all stages of life. That includes women in, in pre as po well as postmenopausal stages. And I, I'm really proud and very excited to be the representing Zestra because it comes at a time in my life where um, I'm, I'm traveling around the country talking to women about love, romance, intimacy, and sex. And being in that chapter, the dating chapter, uh, you know, for after being married for a million years and now being over 50 and dating all of a sudden, issues are coming up. New issues for me, issues that women want to talk to me about, women have watched me on the soap, General Hospital, you know, for, for all this time. And um, it's, it's a subject that not only am I personally very interested in as it relates to me, I'm interested in it as it relates to other women in, in more of a universal uh, level. What are some of these issues? Um, well, specifically, sexual confidence is one of them, big one. Um, how do you, and, and basically the changes that come in life as we go through different chapters of life. Yeah. You know, I mean, whether you're, from, whether you're married, whether you have kids, you don't have kids, whether you're single, whether you're dating, we go through transitions. Transitions are coming in life whether we like them or not. So true. So you gotta make a choice. You hang on and go, no! Or you jump and fly and say, <laughs> okay, bring it on, I'm going. And, and, you know, of course, the smartest choice is always the proactive one. To say, be happy, what it, but you got to know what your options are. Right. And I am amazed at how many women don't know what their options are because they never thought about it. Do you think there's a, a lack of education and information out there for women about sexuality and postmenopausal sexual expression and their options? Well, I think that the information is available. But I think that as women, um, we have a tendency to put ourselves on the bottom of the list when it comes to meeting our own needs. So, you know, um, we want, we're nurturers, we want to please people, we want to take care of our, you know, our husband, our maid, our partner, our kids, our dog, our cat. We take care of everybody before ourselves. Somewhere down, we're number 20-something on the bottom of the list. Mm. And um, it took me to becoming, you know, divorced, empty nester, off contract onto recurring at GH. Uh, even my dog died, Goldie. My whole life changed. Oh. Yeah. I mean, my, but my whole life, literally, in the last couple of years has changed. Wow. And that's a good thing. It's not a sad thing. Okay. But, it, it, but it took me really of rethinking of saying, hey, for the first time in my life, what do I really want? Because i got to figure out something. It's all, it's all new. It's all different as a new opportunity. And a lot of that, um, with regard to you know, relationships and dating, was all new. I mean, because dating at 50, 20 something years later, compared to dating when you're in your 20s and your 30s, is really, really different. What are the biggest differences? Um, I, I think that it's very important um, to have clarity about what, 
what you really want and also to be able to communicate it. Mm -hmm. To ask for what you want? Ask for what you want. Yeah. And, and also be able to um, negotiate and communicate with someone of what you are willing to give. You know, <laughs> it's kind of it's both ways, but a lot of women are very shy about what asking for what they want. Men aren't as shy. Men seem to be more, um, you know, if a man is attracted to a woman, um, it's easier for him to, you know, first of all, men are so visual. So if a man finds the one he likes, he's like, okay, I want that one, you know. <laughs> and he can be very, you know, um, focused on saying what it is that he wants or he needs. Like, I like to eat, or I like sex, or I like sports, I want to watch my game. You know, whatever it is he wants, he tells you, okay, if you want it to work, you do it. Women are more, way more, we want to please, or a lot of women will pretend to be what they are not really because they think he will like us better if we just show that part. <laughs> or we don't mention the other thing that we really want till later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, in, and so it becomes complicated. Yeah. And uh, authenticity and honesty, and I mean, it's really important to start off a relationship to have that. But I think when we're younger, we don't know that. But I think when we get into 40s, 50s, 60s, people who are dating, you've got to know that. And if you want, you know, you're building a whole life. You're stepping into life with someone. you got to get on the fast line quick or it's going to work or it's not. not. Right. And so I think you have to be really aware. Well, I love so much of the wisdom of what you discussed because when we talk about changes, and whenever you and I have talked about changes, you've always framed... Uh, changes in general hospital, changes in your personal life, your daughter's growing up and going to college. These have always been, I mean, these can be very rough changes, but you've always framed it as opportunities. Uh, there's so much more excitement and opportunity when we see this as a chance to learn new things versus focusing solely on what we're losing. Oh, for sure. You know, you know that's a really yeah. good point. And in being, su success in life builds confidence. You know, and it's very easy in life. We all want to continue to do what we do really well because that validates how good we are at it and how important we are or how much we have to contribute. But we don't learn from that. Mm -hmm. You know, the fun stuff, as you know, with mm -hmm. your therapist. I mean, my gosh, you know. Psh, try the new stuff. Right. Because that's where we really grow and change. But I think so much as human animals, when we have found, quote, success or happiness, whether it's a job or a relationship, we, we try to cling on to it. We want to hold on to it and we fight change tooth and nail. Absolutely. But what we're all saying is that that system, I think, even in our financially and even in our economy, that whole system of, of operating is collapsing. It's not working. We have to find new ways to adapt, to grow, to change. Yeah, and to stay in sync. Yeah. You know, I mean, one thing I learned with, with dating and with going out with, you know, men, you know, um, these days, a lot, men are getting a lot of help sexually from yes. all the kinds of prescriptions and things they can take. And what, uh, what I'm hearing for women is there's a lot of pressure on women to keep up. Yes. They can't keep up, or they don't want to keep up, or they don't feel in their heart, you know, the stress, the medications, the issues that women go through with menopause, bone density, all the stuff that comes up later on. Women are feeling like, hey, wait a minute, he's ready to go. He's on drugs, I'm not. <laughs> exactly. And where do so you get... You know, so I, I just want to bring that in because you asked me earlier about Zestra. Well, that's what yeah. Zestra has done. You know, for me, it's like it's life changing in that it's it's helping women, and women are really shy about communicating this. Women are really shy about talking about it. Yes. Men has no problem saying it. Yes. You know, men are like really good. They think about sex. Da, da, da. Women are like way more. You know, women will talk about like their kids or their relationship or romance but when it comes to sex. But you open up the door and you start. I'm sure you get this from when you go out and do your talk. Mm -hmm. Wow! You hear, all yeah. of a sudden you get in your fault. Yeah. And that's a healthy thing. I think that's a good thing and that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. So that's what's exciting for me to be a part of that because I love, yeah. you know, being in that groove. Well, you've, you've been an example of that for standing up for what you want, for, for asking for what you want. And, you know, I think your this opportunity with Zestra is very much in alignment with, with encouraging women to be assertive and proactive with saying, these are my wants, these are my demands. You know, mm -hmm. this is, but to communicate. And like you would say, take the shoulds away. You take know, the, take the shoulds you. away. Take you the shoulds away. Way. He's wrote I the know. best book. He's wrote the best book. Absolutely shouldless. <laughs> I have, and I tell people this because I love his book. But it's because as you go through life, I think when yes. it comes to people, every time they say, you should do this, it's yes. so subtle. Yes. People say, you should do this. I go, no, I shouldn't. Right. But, and I think of you, of your famous book. 
I love that. that. Thank you. You take all the pressure off of saying you shouldn't. You know, you just shouldn't do anything. Well, there's no to. universal invisible committee sitting out there deciding what we should do, saying that women should not discuss sexuality and arousal with with their friends and with their partners. There's mm -hmm. just no invisible. You know, but but we'd like to think there is. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it and it 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 makes it harder for people then to be able to take responsibility for their wants and for their desires if they think they shouldn't do it. But then they uh, suffer for that. It's true. We were actually, we were just down on Times Square a few minutes yeah. ago and we were doing a thing for um, PIX, you know, on the news. Uh -huh. where we were tackling people with the mic and saying uh -huh. questions. You had the mic? This was... I had the mic. Well, right. you know, we were doing a report. Yeah, and asking questions about, you know, relationships or what. And it was It's kind of like 50... It was interesting. 50, 50... I ran my own little focus group on this because, you know me, I always like to see what's going on with the numbers. And it was kind of 50-50. How many people were, like, really shy? As soon as you... They wanted to be on. They'd be watching. You see, we go up at the mic. But as soon as it was, like, you have questions on intimacy or romance or dating, you could see before... The, the look in some women's eyes would be like, oh, no, 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 I, I don't want to do that on TV. Oh. I don't want to do it on TV. Nah. They, it, they wanted to talk about it, but not if it was going to be on camera. Wow. <laughs> going to change. Yeah. And I think you're leading to that. Change. I think you're leading that. Yeah. You had been so public, um, even when you were doing a radio show, I mean, a very explicit public about... Sex drive radio show, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so aside from Zestra, what else are you doing now to... to are you still doing a radio show? Or are you still doing, doing these talks? Or? <sighs> tell us what's going on, because I know there's a lot happening in Jackie's you know, life. I'm dying to tell you, right? It's like, <laughs> in, uh, indie drama. As indie we drama. It, indie drama. <laughs> New yes. term, new term. That's like the indie soap. Indie soap. Um, it's a. It's called the Bay. The Bay. The series. dot com is where you find it. Um, and I'm playing Sophia Madison, the mayor's wife. Mm -hmm. and I'm having fun. With a southern accent. Nicholas Gio, yeah. All right. She's a southern girl. Nicholas Coster's playing the mayor, my yes. husband. Tristan Rogers is on. Mary Beth Evans is on. Paul Satterfield, a million. I, I shouldn't mention names. No, I don't mention everybody. <laughs> but it's great. And. Um, Gregory Martin, um, who you must know Gregory. Oh yes, you know Gregory. He's the writer, producer, director. So, and he's done his his background is film, yep. as you know. So he's you know it's film, not tape, which is a different kind of fun actually. How is that different? It's different for those of us that've been in the soap world forever. You know, with, with old camera tape and everything's like five cameras, boom, boom, boom. Practically, you know, editing time. I mean, a little bit editing, but not compared to film. It's kind of fun, just creatively. And um, this is a great group of people. I think the show, you know, it's the way of the world and it's where soaps are going. Yes. I mean, a lot of the ones that are on the air aren't on the air anymore and the ones that are still on, we don't know how much longer they're on, but it's going in this direction and internet is becoming so uh, powerful that if you want to stay in the game, that's where, it, that's where it is right now. Yes. And there isn't as much... Uh, there's a lot less, like... Network control. You know, it got to the point where a lot of what was going on soaps, it was all like network control. It was about budgets, meetings, focus groups, writers. I shouldn't say none, but ugh, I don't can think of the name of any head writers that were allowed to write what they wanted to write anymore. Yeah. They were all being dictated to by what focus groups are saying and sponsors and placements for ads. And it's just got all kind of, ew. Which is probably why the integrity of the shows and the storylines aren't the same. Which is why a lot of them aren't, or they're going off the air. Because yeah. the audience, over the years, that truly loves the medium, was used to character-driven stories. And they wanted their stories, and they were losing audience. So I think if, if going to internet where there's more freedom, and there's less control, and they get to write the stories they want to write... I think people are going to watch. All right, Jacqueline Zeman on We Love Soaps TV. Thank you for watching. <laughs>